Welcome to this look at a really cool new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. Silly P. I'm here on Ballam Road Dairy Farming. This is a new mod map out by FS Landscaping. It's 457.28 megabytes to download. It's only Bloomin' Pemberton's farm. Tom Pemberton Farm Life. I've been watching Tom for years now. Um, and I'm not going to lie. There has been a bit of hoo-ha about this. A couple of different map makers were making it at the same time. Um, this is the one by FS Landscaping. I'm excited because my Silver Run Forest Let's Play is almost at an end. And I've been waiting for certain maps to come out. And I think I might be moving here. Um, I'm very excited about this. I'll try to contain myself. Um... It's set in Lytham, Lytham St Anne's in Lancashire, just south of Blackpool, is where Tom Pemberton's farm is. It's set on the Ballam Road, that's why it's Ballam Road Dairy Farming. We do start here with a pickup, and we do have an animal livestock trailer. Uh, the main farmhouse is here. Now, there's no sleep trigger put in place. That's been left off to allow you to decide where you want to put it. Now, I'm going to say this as we go round. Um... Some of the triggers are all over the place, so finding the exact ones for various different things is going to be tricky. Now, obviously, I'm going to be very gushy over this because, like I said, I've been watching Tom Pemberton for ages, um, ages and ages and ages, and I still need to go to the farm. I still want to go to Pemberton's. Um, I have thought about asking, well, maybe if we could do not a collab necessary, but like a farm tour. That would be awesome. I would love that. Anyway, regardless. Um, these fields here have at different times had different animals in. The uh, highland cows that they've got have been in these various different pens. We're going to go up into the main farmyard and uh, we'll have a bit of a chat about you know, just what I know, what I remember from the videos. I'm not right up to date because I've been away with Mrs. Sidney P for the last two weeks. I haven't watched any of my usual YouTubers over the last couple of weeks, but I'll fiddle him as much as I possibly can. So, on the left-hand side, we have got... Actually, you know what I need to put on? Uh, that, and that, and that. There we go. We do have, to our left-hand side, a cow pasture. To our right-hand side, we've got silage clamps. We do have some start machinery and equipment. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, we do start with some production chains on New Farmer. So, this silage clamp is new, or I say fairly new. This was the old silage clamp, and silage used to be put into here as well. That's interesting. So, that's now manure heap, in-game. This was referred to as the showroom because um, they had Can-Am came out and did a, did a video with Can-Am and they called it the showroom. So silage used to be do, done in both of these and they would push it up and compact it underneath the roof um, and then use this one. Now they've had this put on the outside and they're hoping in the future have a roof put on across the top of this so silage clamp just here we've got a seed and mineral feed um, silo just here in the real world I think they just have um, what they have in it it's feed supplements to go in the top mix ration and then we've got the new the new barn just here it's slightly different modded but the new barn is just here so this one here will hold 125 cows. We have got feed triggers, the various different bedding. What I love is how this it is so... As I'm, as I'm going around, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, they did this here and they did that there. And you've got a big slurry pit there. That's got a bubbling system in it in, in real life that switches on and off automatically and bubbles and stops it crusting over on the top. So as I was saying, this was out to here. The first cow pass that we walked past here will hold 150 cows. So this open cow pasture, 150 cows. Some more start equipment. Although it's slightly different, it's a different manufacturer, but um, Tom Pemberton saved up and out of his own money, bought a slurry spreader with the drag, ho uh, drag hose, drip hose uh, on the back of it, injector system. We go out across the bridge here. Sorry, I'm, I'm buzzing. Through the gates and over the bridge. The amount of times I've seen him doing silage harvesting and mowing of the grass and they call it box muck but manure uh, muck spreading we've got a greenhouse here a small greenhouse we do start with three 
on New Farmer. We'll have a, actually, I haven't even looked at the map, so I'm so excited about getting out here. And all the fields out here. We'll have a look at the map. And then we'll talk about slot counts as we come back in. So, let's go back to the map, shall we? No, I was right. With that one. There we go. So this is what the map looks like. On New Farmer, we start with a fair bit. Now, the main farm itself encompasses all of these fields here. That will set you back to... 1,409,000. So if you come onto a farm manager and start from scratch, you don't own those fields. And on New Farm, we do start with all these as, as well. There are more fields that can be purchased in various different prices, as we can see, 182 grand, that small one there, 25. We've got a few smaller ones across here that we can buy. The one thing I'm not overly, not impressed with, but overly happy with, and it doesn't matter which way I say it, is the rest of the map, the verges the periphery it's 19 million to buy all the rest of it so i think you're probably going to stick mostly to the fields you can buy farm manager and start from scratch obviously you'd have to buy them all as you kind of worked your way around um so yeah that's one downside to it i suppose there's custom i think they said custom soil map um there's some obviously custom buildings a lot of the barns and buildings can be removed if we go into here and go to demolish we can remove all of these if we want to so if we want to switch things out say all of these the manure heaps and things we can some of these sheds we can remove so you can put your own ones in if you want to as far as slot count goes on all three game modes it's 412 all the same machinery is all here all the buildings are all still here so that doesn't change it's just whether you own the land or not um, what else well, contracts are available which is good to know and as far as the start machinery and equipment goes, we'll scroll down to here. We're going to see it as we go around anyway, but under small tractors, we do start with three. Now, in real life, they've got a Hurleyman and they've got an old, is it the case loader? They've got a really old sort of case. So I think if I do come on to and do a Let's Play, I'm going to switch out machinery. Obviously, the Hurleyman's going to be a trickier one because we haven't got any modern Hurleymans, but I suppose we could do. So we'd start with those. There's JCB Telehandler across the road at the secondary farm which in the real world, I think they lease parts of that from another farmer. We've got the pickup that I'm in, and we've got a Mahindra Retriever. Um, I know Tom Pemberton has been after a pickup for ages. He hasn't bought one yet, but he really, really wants one. We've got a cramped half-pipe trailer. We've got the slurry spread of the Schrouten with the spider on the back of it. We've got a side mower, which they do have. Uh, we've got a bale shredder. I think theirs is a McHale, I want to say. Um, we've got our tanker and we've got the RA142 feed mixer. They've just taken delivery of a brand new Keenan Mech Fiber 300. I'm not sure if there's a modded one of those. but So again, I might have a fiddle around and see what we can find. Animal transport we've seen, front loader attacher and some front loader tools as well. So I think I'm going to do the next bit on foot. So we can go through the main new barn. This has all just been freshly concreted in the real world. They've had a new concrete section put around here because it got quite muddy. Um, I know this is a kind of history lesson as well. Where the new barn is, there used to be an old building here, which was a bit run down, and what they call the midden, the manure heap, um, was just around here. That all got knocked down to make the new barn, and they moved the midden out here. This has just had these panels put in recently, and when they were putting the concrete floor in, and they put these uprights in, they cracked the concrete in the corner, which I think they fixed now. Um, so we've got the old good barn, which has been kept. And the slurry and manure system goes in. There's a cover here, which it's not showing on here, but goes into the main slurry pit. These have just been replaced because they had some problems with that as well. So we have got slurry points. And I think the milk point is a little bit further around, which we'll get to in a moment. So we've got pastures, barns, all over the place. If we come around the back of this one here, we've got the next one. So this is the old good barn. This holds, how many was it this holds? Trigger is just there. 48 in here. It's mostly cows. Uh, they do have sheep, they do have some goats. So I'm thinking about whereabouts we can, I can definitely put sheep, goats. I can't do on console, but we can have a fit around. We come through to the yards here. We've got the open pastures out here. And what they generally do for um, when the cows are out, when they're grazing, they put electric fencing out in sections across the field 
so the cows will graze on certain sections as they work their way up. We've got a pasture, another pasture up the end here. Now this whole bit of land is on an old floodplain. They have got drainage ditches, and I know uh, Tom and his dad talk about it quite a lot. They've put the drainage ditches in. They've got drain tile, pipes that run out of some of the fields into here. But if this fills right up, then the water's got nowhere to drain to. And they have, in the last few years, have suffered quite badly with flooding. So, pasture up the end here. This has got 120 cows. So you do start with some cows. Dairy cows this side, beef cows the other side of the road, which we'll go and have a look at. So we've got 120 out of 150 here. They do also have, if we go down to here, enough feed for the beef cattle and the dairy cattle. It says for a year. Um, there's not total mix ration, but it is hay. So we can make total mix ration. So we've got that pasture out here with feed trigger and water trough in the middle of the field. So we'll come back down here. So there's plenty of areas for grass. So if we're doing silage, we're making total mix ration, it's all here. Like I say, I'm, I'm quite excited. And I think, if I remember correctly, in the corner of this field, is it just here? They've got beehives here. They've got a few bits of equipment, so I might put some beehives in as well. So coming back down into the rest of the yard. We've got feed triggers. There's a milk point, I think, is just here. We've got another barn area here, which will hold 32. This one, I'm going to need to look at the map, because I can't remember what this one was called specifically. We're here at the moment. Oh yeah, the side shed. So the side shed's just here. They normally feed along here. They used to have um, the trough system down here, so the cows would come through for their for their feet. Um, they've just got a new cattle crush, one that kind of does work. Oh no, they had a new one put in. They have got a new one in here, haven't they? And then the actual dairy side of things is in here. And what I love is how it's, it's recreated. Now they've just announced this is going to be all redone. They're going to be increasing the size and capacity of their dairy farm. This section here in real life is where all the uh, newborns, when they can fit them all in, come into here. So we'll go through the dairy and out the back. And there's see bottom right it says Pemberton Dairy. So we do have the dairy point in here, which is manageable from here. So we can do butter, cheese and chocolate, as you can do with a normal dairy. Um, so the milk gets bought in and we can do it all from here. Tom will come in here in the mornings, make himself his coffee, hot water at one of the taps, and he comes down into the dairy and he puts the milk into his cup from the cows. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. If we come out the back of here, we have got cell point here. Is that cell point? That might be for the milk. I'm trying to think. There's a cell point here. So we've got Tom Pemberton's farm shop. So we've got the farm shop. Now the first video I ever saw of Pemberton's farm was it was along here they had a building here which was for raw milk and Tom Pemberton was showing how the raw milk machine worked so that was all it was and then over the years I've watched the channel they've had the farm shop built and put in they, uh, they have their Christmas celebration stuff here and what they're planning to do what they're aiming to do is open it up more to the public so it's more of a kind of farm shop open farm so you can come and not necessarily petting farm maybe kind of like that come down the side here and you'll see they got gate uh, benches and seats and stuff and often they have sheep in here goats sometimes are in here and you can walk up down the middle and you can see the animals and often they'll let the public in here when they let the cows out when they've been in all winter they let them out into the fields and people can come and watch the cows go out and they uh, the cows frolic they get very excited and leap about the goats are normally or have been in here I love the fact that it's all here That's it's absolutely brilliant so we go back down the side of here. So the beef cattle are, um, they do have the butcher here and you can come and get your meat here and various different items from the farm shop. Over the back here of the Pemberton's dairy section, we've got where your pallets will spawn. So your cheese and stuff like that will spawn out of here. Now I'm trying to remember if it's his aunt. I think he said it's his aunt. His aunt's house is here. And what they have done and do often do is they'll bring the cows out through here, through the, the car park. They'll block off the road here and a little bit further up. They take the cows out across the road here. And again, it's what I love, fact it's all here. Across the road and into this pasture here. And I love the fact that we've got the, the muddy, wet, sort of boggy area down here as well. 
now into this pasture. We'll get onto this in a little while. There is a cow pasture up here, which we'll get to later on. And we've also got, just get the gate. We've got a greenhouse tucked up here. It's the second of three greenhouses. So we've got another small greenhouse just up here. Go back to the yard. I need to grab the pickup actually. So what we'll do is go back round, out from the farm shop, go and grab the pickup. And we'll head out further afield. Very cool. And it's one of those things, I suppose, anyone that watches any YouTube for any period of time, you obviously get that to that point where you, you feel like you kind of know them from what you've seen, which is, is no different to, for any YouTuber, anyone watching any YouTubers. But also seeing so much of it, it feels incredibly familiar, you know? And I like that a lot. So we have got a pasture bit just there, but the actual dialogue box is up the road so we can go up onto the Ballam Road. This is often quite busy at certain times of the day but we're going to head right up to the top of the map first which I haven't got that open. To Homestead Farm. Now Homestead Farm up here is a sell point and that's for your bale related crop types. Um, so things like silage, hay, straw. I don't think we can sell manure there. It's just up here. Have I missed the turn? I missed it already. Yeah, I've looked just there. See, again, overexcited. So I'm not sure about all these sections that are in the, the sort of the verges of the map. So let's go back to the map and I'll show you where we are. So we've come up here. These actually are fields we can buy, so that's actually not too bad. I was just looking, thinking, oh, it's a bit you can't. Um, that's the golf course. That's possibly why you can't. And maybe down the side of there as well. There'll be plenty to be getting on with. So continue out the road here. Apologies if I miss anything. Like I said, the triggers are a little bit difficult to discern um, because there's quite a lot on top of each other. But there are milk points, slurry points in various different locations. So, Homestead Farm is just up here. There's your cell point. So we're right up here. He says, that's because I'm over it. There you go, Homestead Farm. We go back out onto the main road and then down to the other side of the road, which is the secondary farm. Which I drive on the right side of the road. The last couple of maps I've been on have been Griffin and then Silver Run. So I've been on American maps. And Mrs. CDP did point out to me that I was driving on the wrong side of the road. So hopefully now we should be on the right side of the road. I don't think... Now, again, I, I don't think there's any bits on the map that need to be bought for triggers to appear. I think everything is is open and out, I think. Deer on the road. Oh, that looks good. Now, the big differences between this and the real world um, are, is, are, that we've got a biogas plant on here which is a little bit further up this road. We are going to get to another pasture. Just up here. There's a little bridge bit that goes across on the drainage ditches. Now I wonder if they've got the thing over here. There's a section over to this side. I'm sure it's this side. Oh, no, I haven't got it. It's got like a large pole that fills, that fills up. I'm sure it's here. But where they've got the crossing here, they often corral the cows in here. If there's ones they need to get out and they need to separate them, I'll often do it in this little section here. But another pasture there that will do 150 cows. We've got a trigger there. Like I say, the triggers are all over the place. We've got feed trigger, but there's not a water trigger showing there. But there's another trigger down by the gate, um, which I'm assuming is the milk trigger right down the bottom. Back to the pickup and continuing on. Now, today's been a tricky one. I'm going up for dinner with Mississippi P in a little while, uh, and they they dropped mods and three maps today. So I had to choose what I was going to do. I was excited about this map, so I thought, you know what, I'll do the map tour first. Possibly tomorrow morning I'll do the mods, 
I don't know when I'm going to get onto the other two map tours because we head home on Saturday. Um, you see cows in the field there. We'll get to that momentarily, but we're going to head out to the biogas plant. On New Farmer, you do start with it. We'll check. I think that's part of... Just going to check. Uh, biogas plant's there. I think, yeah, that's part of the main farm area. So when you come into a farm manager or start from scratch, when you buy the main farm area and these pastures and fields here, the biogas is part of it, that, that 2.4 million. Um, so whether you want it or, or not, it's there and accessible. It's a standard biogas plant. Plenty of room though, because you own the land, it'll give you um, scope for either production chains or if you want to put more silage clamps on. Plenty of silage clamps at the the, uh, at the main farm, but if you want to go big on your biogas plant, you can. Plenty of space up here. And like I say, it is a fairly standard one. Only digestate that comes out, nothing like methane or anything like that. But there we go. Silage, slurry, manure, and sugar beet cut. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to mention. Going through the cell points and looking at crop types, there's no cell point for soybean or sugar beet. Um, I'll show you what I mean. If we go to here and we scroll down to soybean, no cell point available, which is interesting. Um, sugar beet there's not, but sugar beet cut, we've got homestead farm or the biogas plant. I think sugar beet cut because you can feed it to cows, um, so you would have to cut it if you want to sell it or put in a cell point and we'll take it. There are plenty of modded cell points. Um, nothing with sugar cane either, um, I suppose because it's not being a crop. Well, cotton technically isn't either in the UK. I thought I'd mention that. So heading back out of here, we're going to go right and then right again. I'm trying to think if I get this going. I think so. Which will take us down to the next large pasture. Again, you'll see the, I think the milk point, the water point, and probably the feed point in the field. Just coming up on our left hand side. But the actual dialogue box for this one is a bit further down. But this one's got beef cows in it to start off with. Again, with enough feed to keep them going for a year. Nice big open pasture. You could cut that grass as well if you wanted to. There's plenty of grass to be cutting. And we come to the secondary farm. But this one has had a lot of new buildings and stuff put in by the, the landowner. Like I said, I'm pretty sure the Pemberton's lease some of this. So if we open this gate here, the dialogue box for this one, and I think the milk point is just there. So you feed and waters out in the field. Dialogue box is here. We've got 100 out of 250. So this will do 250. And this has got limousines and Angus in it. Um, so you start with those. Close the gate. The triggers on the end of the gate. Make it look more immersive. We have got, I'm going to go around the other side. We've got a small and a bigger cattle barn. We've also got more silage clamps, and this is the third greenhouse. So we've got the third greenhouse there, small greenhouse. Around the corner, we've got two silage clamps tucked in here, and the JCB. Now the JCB is over at this side of the farm. Again, I think they borrow it when they need it. Um, they've got their own um, small manor too, which I might put one in, but this is over this side of the farm. They use it occasionally. I'm, I'm glad that's been put in. And then we've got over this side, we've got a manure heap just there. We've got the uh, the bigger one. So that's the, I'm just checking my notes to make sure I don't get this wrong. This is bigger beef cattle shed. We'll do 50 and the smaller beef cattle shed will do 30. Feed triggers, etc. Slurry points all around here. With the manure heap being at the end there. More farm area and this being part of the farm that when you start the map or if you buy the farm area and you get all of this, we've got a placeable point out here as well. If you want to put stuff in. And then the smaller fields we're going to drive past in just a second. Um, we've come from the biogas plant down the side of there. We're now here. We're going to drive around there and down the side of these fields. I think we're going to go this side actually and then down here to a cluster of cell points. This is when we get down to the more, I suppose, the standard cell points we've got in game production points. 
but there's nothing to stop me putting other ones in if you want to. So from here, shed space just there if you need to store vehicles and machinery up, up, up on this side. So out through all these. It's a little bit tight down here. Because of all the fences around, there's not as many hedges. The hedges don't have collisions with the fences. The fences do. It's going to be for small-ish machinery. You're not going to get away with massive machinery down through here. In real life, they don't do any arable. They generally, or mainly, deal with the animals and doing uh, grass and silage and stuff like that for mixed ration. Obviously, you can mix and match it in-game and do it how you want. They do often go out and bale fields for other farmers in the local area that do arable farming. So we should come out, if I've got this right, further down the Ballon Road. Like I say, this is where we get to more sort of standardised things. On the left hand side, we've got the restaurant, just there. On the right hand side, we've got the golf course, and the golf course cafe I think it is. Golf course cafe sell point. And that's on part of that big open land. The golf course runs out all across here. If you want to spend 19 million, I suppose the grass would be available. If you wanted to cut it all, you can come out here and be a greenskeeper. There's some nice mods by 82 Studio for that kind of thing. The zero turn mowers and things like that. So you do a bit of that if you wanted to. Back out onto the main road, we're going to take a left. Down the left fork, we've got a petrol station in the fork just there then if we turn in here yeah, just here we've got spinnery and then the cafe sell point not cafe restaurant no not restaurant either supermarket <laughs> there we go spinnery is just there supermarket is just over here And then we're going to head out to the vehicle store. I think it's back out to this road just here. Chuck a left just here. Down the road to the vehicle store and workshop trigger. It's also the reset point. So if you need to reset anything for any particular reason, you've stuck it in a ditch or got stuck in a tree or whatever you've done. Reset point is over this side. Vehicle store is there. Workshop trigger is just around this side here. back out again around to the other side we've got the livestock market and we've got an oil mill whoa sorry that's me that's on me apologies so livestock market is on this side of the road it's just here oil mill is directly opposite I'll show you on the map where we've been so down through here we came out onto the road just about here. So restaurant, golf course cafe, fuel station, we came down that side, spinnery, restaurant, we came out of there and down to there, vehicle store with workshop trigger, back out onto the road there, livestock market and oil mill. We're gonna go back up and across there. And we're gonna head out to the bottom there to the grain mill, which is the last of the sell points on the map. Now, I know it may not be your cup of tea, uh, if, you're, if you like your big open maps, your big America maps, that kind of stuff. Um, and it's, it, I say it's only relevant to me. I'm buzzing excited because I've, I've followed Tom Pepper. Because I watch his channel and have done religiously for a long time now. Um, but it's still, it's still a cool map. I, I like up around the farm area. The other two maps that came out today, like I said, I'm not sure when I'm going to get onto those, but I will. I will try, it may not be so I get home on Saturday now, I'm just thinking I will try my best anyway. So if we turn in down here, bottom of the map, heading east, not east, heading west, all turned around. Quite a drive out here, out to the grain mill. Production chain you don't own, 
We do own a few of the others. Like I said the green hills is the biogas plant. We do start with. I don't. Do we start with all of them? Actually, guess what I think on new farmer. Let's have a check. Uh, biogas plant. Oh no, it's just the dairy because it's Pemberton's dairy. And the green hills is yeah. So the other ones you'd have to buy the oil mill and the uh, grain mill, which is coming up. Just on the left. Here. Like I say, up and around the actual main farm. If I've missed a trigger, I've missed a few bits here, I do apologise. Um, this is the grain mill, just tucked in here. So we are now down here in the southwest corner of the map. We've been around the whole thing. Ballam Road Dairy Farming, Pemberton's Farm Dairy and Farm Shop um, by FS Landscaping. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape, or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. As always, thanks for watching.